Welcome back to Better Living. I'm here with Dr. William James from the Armory Church, and he is a regular guest on our show. And sometimes, um, you know, he challenges me to do things and gets me in trouble. Last time you were with me, we did the no cursing challenge. 30 and I days. I said I was going to do it, and I did really well for a couple days. Days. Couple of days. Yeah, but I'm still working on it. I'm still really working on it. Well, you start all over yeah. again. That's the key. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. I didn't think about that. But I'm going to start all over again. I can, can do, it. do it. Yes. yes. I'm going to hold you accountable. <laughs> yes, that I know. Uh, I'm fully aware of. <laughs> I kept waiting like to get an email from you or something. I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> we, he is going to be checking in with me every day. Yes. The conversations that have struck up from that, I mean, just the, the response. People are just engaging it and they're having better conversations. They're realizing they can use more positive words mm -hmm. to help them get their emotions across. So it's been very positive. I think it is a great thing, and I'm going back on the 30-day challenge, that's for <laughs> okay. sure. Let's talk today about the seven deadly sins. Yes. Um, we've mentioned it a few times before. Just before we start, let's just run down the seven deadly sins. Well, the first, I'll just do it this way. The last couple of weeks I've been ministering, teaching on the seven deadly sins. We've covered We've talked about pride, the negative part of pride, the positive side of pride. Uh, the Bible says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Grace is the power to change. I think that's what we all want. So when you humble yourself, God will give you that power. Last week I talked about gluttony, Ugh. and that's just overeating. But I looked at the emotional side of it, the spiritual side. A lot of it can be traced back to the spiritual. But then there's a physical side. Some people just have chemical imbalances or they need sure. encouragement. I have no problem with that, hospitalization, whatever you need to do, but really looked at that breaking a habit. We talked about nine biblical principles on how to break free. I use the acronym break free and I unpack that. This weekend we're going to talk about greed. That is a big one. Yes. I, I have always said I thought gluttony was one of the biggest yeah. uh, conversations, thing that people talk about. Sure. Um, but uh, greed is something that Let's be honest, it's in everybody's Well, life. yeah, we all do. And it used to be very easy to control. You mean you run out of money, you stop your spending, right. that's it. But now we have this thing called credit cards. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to spend more than you actually have. Uh, when you're meeting your basic needs, that's not usually the problem. That doesn't get you in the debt. When we start going after our greeds, right. that's where we get into trouble. The Bible says God will supply all of our needs, not, not our, our greeds. Yeah, not yeah. our wants. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having things, just as things don't have you. But a lot of people are getting tr into trouble spending-wise on the greed side, and that's where it becomes deadly. Ironically, uh, just this morning while mm -hmm. I was getting my tea in the break room, the Today Show was on, and... They were talking with a financial person, Ooh. and they were talking about debt and money and how yes. many problems in marriages are caused by disputes over oh, money. Yeah. And Matt Lauer, who, I mean, is no philosophizer by any <laughs> stretch of the imagination, yes. <laughs> said something I thought was really profound. What if three-quarters of those fights about money you didn't have anymore with your spouse? What a happier marriage it would be. And Absolutely. I know that seems really simple, but... Um, that's a, it's a big issue in marriage. Well, a lot of people think till it's now not it's not now till death do us part. It's till debt do us part. And I've learned as a counselor for many years that debt is one of the number one problems of divorce. Debt, getting in, in financial trouble. You said we were going to have this house by then. You said we would have the car by then. And debt really separates a lot of relationships. Well, there are several um, Christian financial people that, yes. um, that you know, I, Dave Ramsey is a name that oh, comes yeah. to mind right off the top. And, and I know he preaches and teaches um, the zero debt. You know, Absolutely. you take your money, and I think he uses like an envelope system. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had several friends that have gone through that, yeah. um, and you put, you know, if you have this much money in your eating out envelope and it's gone, you don't eat out anymore until the end of the month. I, I think there's some 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 good concepts there. It can be a bit extreme from my point it, of view. That's why I haven't done it, because I, yeah. I feel the same way. But, uh, I mean, we do need to take it seriously, and Dave's right there. We do what we have a 10-10-80 rule. Uh, Rockefeller, the great billionaire, had applied it at one time. 10% to God, because wherever you put God first, he moves. So mm -hmm. every time we get paid, we give a tenth. That's the tithe. We return it back to God. It's our understanding that God owns everything. We're just right. stewards of what he owns. So we return the 10%. He could ask for 20 or 30, but he just said 10%. 
10%. And wherever you put God first, he's going to move. And so then most people don't think about it. Every time I get paid, I, I give God 10% and start to save 10%. Mm -hmm. Then you live off the 80. That's the 10, 10, 80 rule. The 80 will include your debt. It will include your bills, will include your routine obligations. I found out that the more you put God first and start saving that 10%, it begins to accumulate and you can knock bills down one at a time. The 10, 10, 80 rule, it works. What, uh, what do you say when you're counseling people to people who have really gotten themselves into a mess and they just feel overwhelmed by it? Well, I understand there's their frustration, but here's my thing, you didn't get into debt overnight. Right. So it's gonna take you a while to get out, but if you're positive about it, if you, I, I think you spell relief, B-U-D-G-E-T, budget. Budget is planned spending. Budget is when you tell your money where to go. Right. <laughs> Often we know that money has a way of sneaking away without telling us. So you plan your spending. The Bible says it's important to plan your spending. In fact, the Bible says stupid people spend their money as fast as they get it. And uh, that, that's hard because we're not really thinking about the future. So I'm just encouraging them to start saving little by little and put God first, try to get that 10% aside, and you'll realize, I've learned over the years, that that 10% begins to build, and you can start applying that to your bills. Absolutely. But it has to be proactive. You have to have a mindset that says, I'm not going to be here any longer. It'll take a while to get out, but you, you also, can do it. You also have to have that plan. You and have to when plan you fail spending. the plan, we wouldn't do that at work. We wouldn't come into work without a plan, Absolutely. or so you have to do that. We're going to continue our discussion about greed and money and the seven other the sixth other of the seven deadly sins. We'll be right back on Better Living.